Welcome to my second episode of this early Pandor Ausführung A build in Winter Whitewash. Last episode we had some good progress. This episode it's all about the whitewash applied to it. The Pandor is close to be finished and will be so with the next episode. Last episode I left you guys with the field applied camouflage. This episode we will have a multi-layer winter whitewash hairspray chipping. First on it we will need to build some tools. He apply washes of course, spray some stencils and finally mess around with washable white. Last but not least there is a fewer question at the end of the video. If you have a question yourself ask it till about Sunday so I can incorporate it in the next episode. I'm Tank Brusher, thanks for subscribing, let's get into it. Hairspray chipping with actual hairspray instead of chipping fluids. I went back and matched some of the ingredients roughly to what Panzermeister 36 and Michael Rinaldi is using. I like the hairspray idea, it has an applicator, but I can't spray this here in my room so I have no shots applying it. In contrast to Mr. Rinaldi and Mr. Panzermeister 36 I use a strong grip fine mist instead of a medium grip fine mist hairspray. This is because I use it for 3D printing and didn't go out and buy a new one just for scale modeling. I mounted all my modules on a plastic lid and sprayed them out on the open window. After two good coats of hairspray I switched over to the airbrush again and applied a coat of white paint. We don't get around talking about the paint itself. I choose off-white because I have some washable white too and there would be no contrast between the whitewash and the hairsprayed whitewash. It becomes even clearer when we put this against a scale of grey tones since our eyes just are better comparing than dealing with absolute values. Now I am spraying the complete model in a unregular but good covering pattern with the off-white and when you take a step back you can now see that this is not a titanium white. But you can only see this because I have shown you the contrast values, otherwise I could have sold you this footage here as using titanium white. I think that's quite important to leave some room avoiding pure white or pure black so we can add some weathering effects later on, they need contrast to work. When I deal with the road wheel module. I make sure the tracks get a good share of the whitewash. I have some references with completely painted tracks and some without. This highly depended on the maintenance company or the tank crew applying it with the airbrush supplied with the tank. However since it's 1933 and this is quite an elite unit I don't think they improvised too much here. But let's get into the chipping process itself. My first impression did not differ too much from the chipping fluid used for the Field Gun 39R I built before. I still had to soak the surface a lot and was rubbing and rubbing and rubbing with a brush. Uh, this is a synthetic brush, not too stiff, not too soft and uh, the chips didn't form very well. I switched over to my dry brush, that's a much stiffer brush, still with long bristles. And again, um, it's not a pleasant experience, it's hard to describe, it just takes a lot of time and effort to get the chips built. So I came to conclusion that one problem are my brushes I have, and this is something I could fix right away using some spare brushes, some old ones that were quite filthy and in the need of a cleaning. So I just chopped the bristles about yeah, half way off, making the brush shorter and therefore more springy or harder. If I had another whitewash project coming up in sometime soon, I would go for just testing what I have including thinner, different paints, whatever 
just to get the best experience out of the process. But for now, it was fine with the shorter, more stiff brushes. I gained a lot of more control over the affected area, of course, and was able to chip the surface with not too much hassle or wasted effort in rubbing without effect. The distribution of the chipping was kind of random. I focused around areas where the crew would walk a lot over the tank, but still this hairspray chipping is my first layer. The washable white will be the second layer after this and that will give the full definition. Truth be told, I'm not an expert in this yet <laughs> and maybe will never be, but I ordered myself Tank Art Volume 4 and will have a look into this for the next project, I think more appearing in the winter time of this year. The distribution of the chips is quite important, not only for the composition, but yeah, it just adds the realism behind it, so it can't be that much neglected as I do here. Directly after the hairspray chipping and before anything else, I went for a wash or more washes to be clear. <laughs> for this, I always lay down a layer of enamel odorless thinner. This turpentine thinner or odorless turpentine is necessary to prime the surface for the enamel wash that is following. We it's much easier to work with that way. And for the wash I choose a neutral wash. That's about a 50% grey I would guess. And you see here how well this brings the Simmerit back into action. After the hairspray chipping we have a quite pale mush of this dark yellow with green shining through and the red brown. And it lacks a lot of contrast and detail. Of course, the wash brings some of this back, makes it look like a scale model once more and giving it a much more finished appearance. This was done all around the tank and after the neutral wash I switched to some dark wash. That's almost in black, not completely black, but yeah, it's dark wash. <laughs> Now I use this to add some stains. We are quite limited when we come to the weathering and a dark wash just to break up the large open areas was not too bad of an idea and it's always used for the tow cables for example. All vertical surfaces were pre-treated the same way, moistened with enamel thinner first and then my dark yellow for dark brown wash for German dark yellow. Another enamel wash from Amobi Mic I use quite often. And this adds all the details back into service that were washed out or washed down in this hairspray chipping mush on the engine deck, the turret roof and everywhere else where a little bit more darker wash would be necessary. It's just a little bit back and forth what is actually here whitewashing, what is already weathering, but that's not that easy in this project. Let's have a look at the decal sheet before we continue on. We get four options of them. Three of them are in winter camouflage and that's fitting for an early Panther A more than for any other. And the decals, they look good. There's no box cut around them, they're quite a little bit shaped, so they would blend in if we want to choose using them. But with the Simmerit pattern on and the winter whitewash, I was again not going for decals this time. I went for some generic stencils, not plotting my own. I bought them a while ago, before I had my plotter, and they work fine for what they need to do here. On most winter whitewashed camos, the bar cross is inverted, having only the outlines in black. And this is something that was easy to achieve here, of course, as well as a random turret number that would be fitting for a Panther battalion. 
the second company, first platoon, third vehicle that was commonly present in all battalions, but I have not chosen this to be in a specific army group at a specific date or time. That's just plausible fantasy. These photo etched stencils are held on using some masking tape. That works quite well. I went fast here, not spending a lot of time fiddling around with it and I was quite happy with the result. After they were sprayed on, I hairspray chipped the area a second time. This was not a continuous build. I went back and forth and worked in sections of course, so the turret was quite a bit left behind. But this chipped appearance of the tactical numbers together with the Simurit pattern is clearly something for me that could not be achieved using decals. So going for some stencils, for some generic stencils, I think was quite the right choice here. And this leaves us with the next step and that's the washable white. Okay, the second layer of the whitewash process. I was not sure what this washable white is, so I tested it against a generic titanium white from Vallejo in this case. And I spread it just out using a wet brush. I use water for it and get a feeling for what is, what it, how it behaves and what it actually is. We could clearly get the same result, I think, using oil paint, but acrylic paint is drying faster and therefore it could be better using acrylics in some cases. It's not quite clear when you look at the videos, but the washable white behaves a little bit different. It's denser. It uh, is more easy to spread out. I use identical brushes here and we are not supposed to thin acrylic paints, generic acrylic paints, over 50% and this is quite different with the washable white here. But once it's dried, you can't reactivate it. The paint is dry and it has settled. For the use of this washable white, I wanted to create some contrast in these patches of, or of not the chipped paint. So I painted in or mapping how it's Rinaldi is call it, calling it. I painted in some of the areas using the washable white and getting back in there with water and blending the edges so it would look a little bit more natural. And this is a quite a subtle effect, but it adds a lot, I think. The whole surface in total gets a little bit more white or a little bit back into a white washed surface. And the areas where we removed most of the white, we can get in there with a lot of water added to the washable white and make it a little bit more white again. <laughs> that sounds silly, but yeah, we can mute this harsh contrast of the field applied camouflage, we can mute it down a little bit more, making it more pleasant to look at, I think, looking a bit more realistic. I blended down all of the heavy chipped areas, giving it a little bit more white again. And this can be exaggerated when you have a vehicle, for example, that was whitewashed over and over during a long-term winter. And there you find this a lot of Russian vehicles, for example. This is where this technique would be at home. For the Simurit pattern, I used the washable white to brighten up some of the Simurit panels, only to give it a little bit more variety, making this pale surface a little bit more interesting. For the weathering, we can't use a lot of streaking later on. The Simurit prevents us using this technique. So I tried to yeah, just brighten up the surface, making it more uneven by using the whitewash. Especially here on the mantlet, it already goes into a little bit a highlighting. For now I'm happy with how far we got this episode. 
Doing a whitewash on top of a field applied camouflage with German dark yellow is not the best idea we can have and I will have a debriefing on the end of the next episode talking about this aspect, what he can do to make our life a little bit more pleasant here. Last but not least, I have a question from the audience I would like to answer in the last part. The rest of you guys, see you, thanks for subscribing again. See you next week. In the last video's comment section a question was asked regarding these road wheel sandwich modules if we can get behind there with a brush painting the rubber rims. I think we can get in there just fine. It is not necessary to paint every single bit of it just because they are interleaved so far so tightly there is no chance you can see this. And even after the tracks were on I was still able to paint this polished section on the wheel without any problems. Of course on the back side I have not painted every single bit of the rubber rims, that's just I wouldn't like to save some time using it to better effect in the weathering. My brush I use for painting this rubber rims is a cat tongue brush. It has a much wider base than our normal detail brushes, holding about three times the paint and making short process with the fine tip and the large reservoir that's really easy to paint these rubber rims in two stages. That's it. I hope this was the helpful answer. See you guys next week. Happy modeling! <laughs>